Hey, welcome to part three of our DIY bass guitar build. If you don't know what's going on here, you can check out the other versions, but basically in a nutshell, I created uh, some digital files that you can download over newperspectivesmusic.com to make one of these bass guitars over there. Um, and uh, you can use, it's the way I designed it was so you didn't really need fancy state-of-the-art Vectric software. You could use older software or your own software. And so we kind of talk about all that in some other videos. Now we're up to part three, where I am going to start sh doing the final shaping on the necks and getting some frets in. But I also created for non-CNC users an MDF template version of this kit. And so one of these two bases on the wall I'm making using the MDF template. So we're going to also touch on that. And we're going to today shape out the next one of them, which has been mostly shaped on the CNC and the other one, which we're just kind of starting from brick and uh, we'll put the frets in and you're gonna have a lot of fun so let's go check it out so to recap uh the first video we made the bodies and then in the second video we cut out the necks and fingerboard on the cnc as well as by hand with the uh handheld router templates and then uh, I glued the fingerboard onto the neck that I had cut out that I hadn't shaped yet but I haven't done that yet on the one made on the CNC because I wanted to do these steps a couple different ways and um, I also wanted to just mention this real quick before we move forward. You'll see at the bottom that the fingerboard overhangs just a little bit and that's by design because it's just a way of kind of making that look a little better down there. Um, if you, that really bothers you for some reason, you could go ahead and snug it up. You're just going to have to make sure when we get to the place in the bridge part, you get it all placed right. But um, that's by design. You didn't do anything wrong if your fingerboard's overhanging just a tiny bit. Same on this one. Uh, when you set it up, you should have just a tiny bit, like an eighth of an inch maybe, of overhang on that end. I forgot to mention that when showing you the file, so I figured you should know that you didn't do anything wrong. And you could, you know, like I said, snug that up, but then you would see the seam a little more. It's just kind of a nice way to hide that. So now I'm using my center square to mark where I'm going to put my side position markers. And I always use the stems of rivets, these little eighth inch aluminum stems from when I, I use a lot of rivets when I make my center squares and I save all those little stems. They make nice little markers. They're kind of just a shiny little piece of metal and I don't have to buy anything. Um, and the, you know, this is not even necessarily, but I, I think it's nice to have them. I like to, I like to look at those marks. Okay, we're gonna start talking about fretting now, which is probably the hardest part. Uh, I have a whole bunch of other videos about doing this stuff too from the guitar series and everything, but I'm gonna you know walk through from the beginning. Um, so uh, I want to use jumbo fret wire on this space. Normally I use medium, but I bought some jumbo for these. So I'm going to use that and then I also do the zero fret on my instruments now if you don't want to you could cut that out and put a nut there but I think zero frets are good and you typically want to use a slightly taller piece of fret wire for your zero fret but if you don't want to buy that you could get away with using the same it just might be a little bit harder to set up those first couple frets um, so I actually have some of this jumbo wire that's just a tiny bit taller I'm going to use for the nut and then the rest for this uh, if you don't want to go buying all this of course for one guitar I did leave some links in with the, um, the description of places we can go and you can buy pre-cut wire actually pre-radiused um, that'll just be a little bit big and you can put that in and cut it to fit and all that and it'll save you a little bit of work and also you know uh, the radiusing and stuff but so for now we're going to do it all from scratch and i'm going to start um i have this little block of wood that i, I cut all these holes in to, to store frets and i'm going to start i'm going to cut my zero frets and i'm doing two at a time so i'm going to cut my zero frets and, and put those in from the big wire and then i'm going to move on to the other wire but i'm going to radius it first so our fingerboard has a 12 inch radius to it it's not perfectly flat it's slightly round and what that means is if you were to make a circle 24 inches in diameter uh, the curvature of that 24 inch circle the neck would fit up flush against it so here is a section of that 24 inch in diameter circle 12 inch radius circle right here cut out on these these square radiuses that i sell over at newperspectivesuse.com um, but you also don't need this you could also just use your actual fingerboard as a reference. And now, of course, you're hand sanding these if you're doing it by hand. So you're setting it whatever radius you want. If you're using my CNC file, it is a 12 inch radius. Um, and so what this little machine does here is it bends the wire uh, pretty consistently. Let's see if I, I run it through here, um, tighten it up and it'll change my radius. So the tighter it gets, the bigger the curve is. And you can see, um, I want to get close to 12. I want to be maybe a little bit tall um, to give it a little bit of pressure. And you can see I can hold it up to my guide here. And you can see it's not quite, not quite there yet. So 
tighten this up a little more. Run it through. And now we can see it's getting pretty close. Uh, I'm gonna do it just a little bit more. Now, if you don't wanna spend the money on one of these tools, you can also just very, very carefully do this by hand. Just, just bend it by hand. Give it a little bit of a curve. None of this stuff, you can, you can make it work without using all these tools and being this precise. You can get this to work. This is always a good point in time to remind you that this is the way I do it. It is not the only way to do it. There are many ways to do everything in the world. So, um, And also, I have a video where I show some of these specialty tools and also some ways to avoid spending them, like this little fret tang nipper thing that I have that's, you know, expensive. Um, and you don't need it to do this. It's just, a, you know, makes life a little bit faster and easier if you do have it. I have this little special saw for cleaning out fret slots. Um, Make sure they're ready to go. You can just use your saw that you use to cut them. Get those tangs lined up in the slot. Nice and straight. And just a little soft hammer. I like to use a brass hammer because it's um, softer than the fret. So. In theory, it won't dent the fret. And when you bang that in, try to be even and consistent. Just like that. Only 20 more to go. However, I have this special little tool. It's got a radius to it, and I can put it into an arbor press. I just use my drill press that I can put in and push down and apply even pressure. So I'm gonna do that because it's a lot faster and more consistent than the hammer. So let's go over there. Hand hammering in your frets really, quite frankly, sucks. And uh, it's it's really easy to you know make them a little bit uneven, which just gives you more fret work to do in the end, which we're not even gonna get to in this video. Um, having this fret press really makes a difference. And you, you could probably rig something up yourself too that works pretty well. But you can see how much faster and easier this is. It applies even pressure all the way down. And once your frets are in, the edges are going to be overhanging the fingerboard just a little bit, and so you need to file those in. You can see these are a couple different file tools that I made. You can buy things like this. You know, this one's very simple. I just glued a piece of a broken file onto a block of wood, uh, whereas the other one I cut a, an angled slot to kind of help angle and bevel the edges of the frets in. So this is uh, the way you're kind of supposed to do it and the safe way to do it before you go around to doing final dressing. Um, but I am a cowboy, so now I'm going to show you the way I do it, which is highly not recommended <laughs> because it's really easy to screw up. If you hold it against the sander for just a little too long uh, in the wrong spot, you can put a little divot or, you know, it's just real easy to mess things up. But um, I tend to, to do this. I've been doing it for a while this way, and uh, I've got to sort of develop the touch, you know, to keep myself from screwing up the, the neck edge and the fingerboard edge. And definitely it's easier to do when the fingerboard is not glued on. Um, but you see, I first run it flat across the, the sander and I hold it at a slight angle and it gets my bevel started before I go in and I do it all by hand on the, the final fretting job. But you don't, don't do it that way. <laughs> so now, I'm, uh, like I said before, you know, I wanted to do it two different ways. Um, the other one, I just fretted all the frets on the neck before the neck was shaped because it's still just a rectangular block, whereas this one, the neck was already shaped in the CNC. So I find it easier to put the frets on first and then using these kind of cool clamps that I have, I'm able to uh, glue that fingerboard on. If you're at this point, you're a CNC user, so you could also create radius clamping block jigs or uh, use a bicycle inner tube. A lot of guys do stuff like that. I'm gonna let you in on a little bit of a secret here. I know you're watching this on YouTube right now, but I'm actually not a YouTuber. I don't do the whole algorithm thing or the SEO stuff, and I don't try to sell you subscriptions to food services or, or book services or mattresses, any of that junk. I just make videos because I love sharing videos with you. And of course, it actually 
makes things harder to get done around here sometimes like lugging this camera around everywhere and stuff slows me down quite a bit and so one of the ways i offset this cost is by the the support that i get over at patreon.com slash tim sway so people over there that can support me for, you know a couple bucks a month it really helps me uh afford the time to stop and talk to the camera and share what i'm doing and then the other way of course is by making and selling the products that i make and sell here like this diy kit so if you're interested in building your own base and you like watching this contents or your own guitar for that matter you can go over to newperspectivesmusic.com and get one of these kits. I also sell some pre-cut parts there. A very limited supply, but a little bit here and there. And if the demand picks up, you know, there's that. Uh, I would continue to make some more, as well as guitar pickups and some other parts I make, other full instruments, of course, and uh, squaretools.com, where I sell the tools that I use and stuff. So that's all the, the way that I can kind of, you know, take the time from working to share. And I thank you very much if you are of the means to support my sharing. <laughs> all right, let's get back to it. This is kind of fun for me. Now we have two nearly complete necks, um, one from the CNC file half of the kit and then one from the template version of the kit. And uh, you can see here that because we're not doing 3D modeling and we're doing this sort of, uh, you know, cheat, this kind of fake 3D modeling, this neck is a little bit rougher in shape than uh, it would be if we 3D modeled it. And basically what happens is it gets a little bit pointy right here because since I was doing this molding tool path that was a half circle, um, here where it gets skinnier, that half circle finishes further, so these two never complete. Um, but what that does give you is a little bit more thickness here than you want for your finished product. Anyways, let me grab my calipers and I'll show you. Put the fingerboard on at the first fret right now. I'm at just over an inch thick. I'm at like 1.6 inches thick, and I want to be more like 0.9 inches thick and maybe about an inch here. Uh, and now this one here, of course, we haven't done anything to yet, so we're at, uh, well, you see it's the same thickness, it's just all squared off. So I drew my center line using my center square, and, uh, and now I need to shape this one completely, and this one I just need to finish the shape. So it's really not a lot to do, we just gotta take this sort of peak off, and, and we can do that by hand. This will be relatively quick and easy. This one's gonna require you know quite a bit more work, of course. Now you'll notice in the, the files, uh, there's some DXFs um, and, and PDFs included in there uh, that there is a profile for the neck on the page. You can actually print that out or you can maybe copy like your favorite base or something and make like a little tool like a like a jig or a guide to help you shape this out, you know, of like the kind of a radius. If you want a D-shaped neck um, just out of a piece of scrap wood or something. Um, I'm not going to. I'm just going to wing it by hand and just shape and feel as I go until I get something that I like, kind of old school. Some of the types of tools you're gonna need to do this are, you might wanna use you know, some chisels or, or rasps. Um, I'm a big fan of rasps. I will probably not use any chisels or too much of them. Um, this is a spoke shaver, like a draw knife. Uh, something like this is uh, very handy for shaping the neck. I'll probably use this to do most of my roughing. You might find yourself wanting to use a hand plane of various shapes and sizes to kind of get into some of these tighter areas. But you'll see, I'm probably gonna use mostly the draw knife and the rasp to shape this one. And then this one here is gonna use a lot less. I just need to do a little bit of finishing uh, with the, the hand plane and the rasp to just kind of make this look like I want it. Let's start with the easy one. All right, we'll start with the neck cut from the CNC because that'll be the quickest. Um, I decided just because I did cut that end uh, a little bit on the body in part one, I thought I'd shape this out a little bit. And you can see I'm just using a chisel and a rasp to remove some excess material. Um, but you know, this neck is 99% uh, shape it just isn't quite cut at the end because of the way we had to create these 2d tool paths to trick it into being 3d carved and this is what makes it more accessible to more people um, it just left a little bit of a peak there on the first kind of five frets or so of the neck that needed to be uh, filed down as well as these edges i always kind of leave on there so i can kind of sand it or file it all in together um, you know even if i shaped it with 3d software i would still have a little bit of this to do but not as much and you can see i'm using a spoke shape to help uh, clean that off as well um and th this is you know there's always a little bit of handwork. that's what makes the guitar feel feel nice and special you know it's just getting that neck exactly right um and here you can see i'm using my digital calipers to check it i want it to be about an inch thick at the 12th fret and about 0.9 inches thick at the first fret and there we go we're good so now i have a whole bunch of work to do on the one that has being handmade so i cut the shapes out and done all of this work so far but it's all still just a completely thick three-quarter inch piece of wood 
um, and there's no shape to it all. Um, you could make, uh, even from the CNC files, even without a CNC, you could print out images of some of the vectors and shapes and stuff that I use to create little uh, sort of tools to check, but I'm just doing it by hand the old-fashioned way. I'm just shaping it out with a, you know, with a spoke shave and uh, planes and stuff to get it to where it feels good and I'm not too, too worried about anything else, honestly. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it definitely takes longer than the CNC, but it's a lot of fun. Now, of course, you could use power tools, too. You could set up something with a handheld router to help you kind of do some of this work, um, you know, that way. A lot of guys actually have these, you know, specialty jigs set up for that type of stuff. Or you could use power carving tools like an Arbortech uh, turboplane or just power sanders uh, to remove more material faster. But I find it, it's, you're more likely to screw up and kind of dig in a little too far when you use power tools. And so I just decided to get a little cardio in and do it like this. So that took a little bit more work than the uh, the CNC neck, of course. Uh, I've got about 30, 40 minutes into it now, and it's just about in the same place as the neck that was cut on the CNC. That only took me about five minutes of hand work. Um, so, you know, obviously CNC is faster and easier, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it without one. And of course, there's always sanding to do, you know, starting at about 80 grit up to about 320 using uh, electric sanders as well as hand sanding. And when you're doing this work, this is where you can really finalize some of these shapes and transitions and make them look good. And you might spot things like this. Um, on the one that I cut by hand, uh, I had to cut my fret slots all the way through, whereas on the CNC, I can actually like leave a little bit of wood there and not have to do that. So I don't want to see those little gaps. I just use some wood glue and some of the sawdust from my sanding to plug them all and then, you know, hand sand that in and it uh, makes those kind of little gaps just disappear. So I hand sanded it up to about 400. I cleaned it all off with a little bit of alcohol and then I sanded again, just like the last kind of, you know, 320, 400 um, before adding a finish to it. And in this case, I used my uh, my favorite natural varnish. It's like a eco-friendly uh, old school sort of varnish. It brushes on pretty good, dries quick and get a couple coats on, you know, right away and then let it sit overnight and cure before you mess around with it. And it gives you a nice finish. That seems like a pretty good place to stop. Really, all we have to do now is take the finished body and the finished neck, put them together, do all the hardware stuff, level and crown the frets, and we'll be done. I think we'll be able to wrap that up in one more video. So if you haven't seen the rest of this series, go check that out and stay tuned for the final uh, installment of this. And also, I did a DIY guitar kit in the same fashion, um, and there's some different information and stuff on that there's a whole video series about that so if you're interested in making a guitar instead of a bass you can go check that out also at newperspectivesmusic.com and again there's this whole video series that i put out as sort of um an added you know content for this the people that download this kit but everybody can learn from this stuff and you know you don't need my kit to make guitars the way that i'm making them here so that's why i share this all publicly with you too all right thanks a lot for watching and be good see you see you on the next one